Have you ever heard of corals? Corals look like this. And they live in the ocean in beautiful ecosystems known as coral reefs. I'm gonna tell you something interesting though. Did you know that corals are animals? Yeah, this is an animal. How is that possible? That's what we're gonna discuss today. I'm Dr. Nikki and today we are discussing corals. Get excited. I don't know about you, but when I think of animals, I think of things like dogs and cats and fish. I certainly don't think of this. That doesn't look like an animal, but it is. How is that possible? Well, let's think about that for a second. What is an animal? Do you know? Animals all share four things. They need air, they need food, they need water, and they need shelter. So let's think about that with an animal that we already know, a dog. A dog's definitely an animal, right? Definitely. We just kind of know that. But how does it get all of these things? How does it get air? Well, dogs breathe like we do, right? They got a nose, they got a mouth, they breathe, so they get air. How do they get food? Well, <laughs> we give them the food, right? They eat kibble. What about water? We give them a water bowl. We see them drinking water. Okay, shelter. Now that's the hard one. Because what is shelter exactly? Well, shelter is where something lives. But really the point of that shelter is to keep it safe, right? And dogs, they live in homes with us and that keeps them safe. So they have shelter. They're definitely an animal. But what about coral? Well, corals have all four of those things too. It just might be a little different than you would expect. Let's go one by one. How do corals get air? Because, you know, they live in the ocean. They can't just pop out of the ocean to get air when they need to breathe. Now this is pretty cool. Are you ready? Corals get air from another organism. So an organism is kind of any living thing because the thing they get air from is not an animal. It's actually a plant-like organism called algae. And basically, corals and algae are in a symbiotic relationship. And what that means is that they need each other. So think about it this way. Let's say you're at lunch and your parent always packs you an apple for lunch. But the problem is you, you, you don't like apples. But your friend, their parent packs them an orange for lunch. And they don't like oranges, but you do. And they like apples. So what do you do every day? You just swap, right? And then you get to eat the orange, they get to eat the apple, everybody's happy. That's a symbiotic relationship. And the corals have the same relationship with these little plant-like algae. In fact, these little plant-like algae are so small, they live inside the coral. I know, I know. And what happens is these algae, they photosynthesize, because remember plants photosynthesize which means they get energy from the sun. And with that energy, they can get all of the air that the coral needs. Because really what we need in air is something called oxygen. And the algae produce that oxygen and give it to the coral. And that's how they breathe. So they're not breathing the way you and I do, or a dog does, right? They're not breathing in air in and out, but they're still getting the air they need to survive. How does a coral get food? This is pretty cool. So corals kind of can be divided into two parts of their bodies. They have a skeleton, just like we do, and they also have tissue. And tissue is basically like our muscles and our skin. That's, that's similar to coral tissue. And the tissue covers their skeleton. But the thing about that tissue 
is that it's all kind of in little tiny circles. And those little circles are something we call polyps. And the thing is, each of those polyps have a way to eat. If you look at it closely, you'll see that there's kind of like a little circle in the middle of each polyp. That's basically the hole where the coral's stomach is. And what happens is those polyps kind of just wait. Corals can't move. And they wait for food to just kind of swim by. And then, when they sense what they want, they go Wah! And they catch their food. And that's how they get food. So corals have food. What about water? Well, they live in water, right? They're in the ocean. And they can just kind of get water by being in the water. Kind of just goes all around them and absorbs through them. And that's how they get water. What's the last thing that an animal needs? Shelter, right? How do corals get shelter? Look at that picture again. They're just kind of hanging out, right? There's. Do you see a house in that picture? I, I don't see a house in that picture. Let's go back to what sh being a shelter really means. A shelter is a place that you are safe, right? That's the point of shelter, to keep you safe. Well, corals don't need a home to keep them safe. They need something else. They need some other animal to make sure that other animals don't try to eat them or that something doesn't try to grow over them. And the way they do that is with clownfish, like Nemo. Those clownfish kind of hang out near the corals. And when they see someone coming by that's gonna bother that coral, they're like, mm -mm, no way, turn right around. Kind of like, you know, a best friend. That's the coral and the clownfish. So the clownfish give the coral shelter because it's keeping them safe. So corals get food through their little polyps. They get water by living in water. They get air through a symbiotic relationship with the little algae. And they get shelter because clownfish keep them safe. So a coral's an animal. Pretty cool, right? That's what I thought.